I'm here with Rabbi Noah Kushner, who is the founding rabbi of The Kitchen, a very exciting independent religious community in the Bay Area. Thanks for taking some time to talk. My pleasure. So you were just telling me how you don't love the binary um, of the language of ethical uh, versus or as distinguished from religious. Right. Can you share a little more about that? Yeah. Yeah. So, you know, so many times people will come to me and say, you know, I'm just a good person. I don't have any need for being religious. And um, a long time ago, I started teaching about the idea that justice was like a bird in the forest. And if you wanted justice to evolve, I mean, you could take it out of the forest. If you want it to evolve, it needs prompts and gestures. Mm -hmm. It needs rituals. It needs people. It needs ideas. It needs, I would say, the words of Torah. And that's represented by the forest. Mm -hmm. And the forest uh, sustains the justice, right? If you take the bird out of the forest, um, it it may still be a bird, but we may have no new birds after a little bit of time. Mm -hmm. So... um, I started thinking more and more, and I started thinking in that parable, um, everything in religion is now doing service for that justice. And I don't think that's a bad formulation. I I think there are many Jews who would say, yeah, everything in religion should should support justice, otherwise I'm not interested. Mm -hmm. At the same time, I didn't think it was honest. After years of teaching that, I started thinking, you know, um, I think there's a lot in religion that serves... God that serves other ends, that serves itself. And so I started thinking about the idea that you have the religious and the ethical, and often in in our circles we'll say those things need to be combined. Um, But I was thinking maybe the idea is right with those two terms. Um, And so I started thinking of two new terms. And I thought, what if instead of saying religious and ethical, and and usually when people talk like that, they say, and by the way, religious is the optional part. Mm -hmm. Um, What if we said, um, instead of ethical, what if we said responsibility? Mm -hmm. What what if we said we need to come at the world with a sense of responsibility? Um, We need to be the first in line to help. We need to look out for the stranger. Um, We need to be, as many of my colleagues will say, like Nachshon, the first in the sea right, to split the sea. And then instead of saying religious, which in the old formulation looks cosmetic or like window dressing for that Mm -hmm. ethical, Mm -hmm. what if we said religious instead was um, things that located us in the world that helped us to be humble? And I don't mean humble like so small that you couldn't Mm -hmm. then jump Mm -hmm. over to be responsible. I mean that you would contextualize that responsibility with myself and another person, myself and heaven, myself and generation to generation, myself and the holy words, myself and my possessions, right? Interconnectivity. Exactly. And so my hope is that with those two ideas, instead of saying uh, I'm either ethical or religious or I'm trying to be ethical and religious, we could start using the language of saying I am responsible and humble. Mm -hmm. And just see how that changes Mm -hmm. how we approach things. Mm -hmm. Fascinating. You know, many people talk about Shabbat as, I, I couldn't survive without Shabbat. It yeah. nourishes me to actually live my other days. Yeah. But I feel like in I pick up that you're actually pushing back to some degree on that. Yes. As if religion nourishes us to do what really matters. Yes. And actually, the religious bit can be an end in itself of that's just right. the fu- fulfillment of life in a sense. Is that right? I think that's exactly right. And, and I think, again, like... Um, if you start thinking about this in one way and yeah, one way that right. that's how your Shabbat is, right. I, I don't want to get into like this is the right way and this is the wrong yeah, way. Yeah. I just think that at a certain point we want to say Shabbat is an end in itself. Mm-hmm. And because otherwise the, we are now creating um, Shabbat as utilitarian. Right. Which is inherently problematic yeah, exactly. or contradictory. Yeah, contradictory, exactly. I mean, the whole notion that of uh, not using a shul as a shortcut because you've made That's it right. instrumental. It's Something kadosh is an ends in itself. And if, right, right. if Shabbat itself is exploited, the whole, the whole idea is to condition ourselves away from being exploitative nature of, of, of the world. And, that, that, yeah. and then we can treat one another in that right. way. Right. Right? Like my kids are always, you know, if my kids are leaning on a, a book, yeah, like a holy right. book, I'm like, okay, get off the book, right, you know. Right, right. And, but for me, it's about conditioning ourselves to imagine that things are right. kedusha. And I actually, in, my, in mm-hmm. Silicon Valley, yeah, where I right. live and operate, I call it the opposite of scale. Yeah. Uh, so when we're interested in scale, mm-hmm. 
And by the way, when we started the kitchen, a religious organization, it was considered the hugest compliment. Mm-hmm. Everyone's like, when are you going to scale? Yeah, right, right. And leaving the yeah. you yeah. know technicalities of that right. aside, just the idea that that would be the prize right. is right. where we've come as a culture. Yes, exactly. Growth, growth. And what I like yeah. to say is, um, let's say I make a video and it goes viral. Yeah. We automatically think that that's success. Yeah. Okay. However, my guess is a teacher said something to you when you were small mm-hmm. that changed your life, right. that changed your children's life, mm-hmm. that will never be detected, and it is immeasurable. Isn't that more powerful than scale? Mm-hmm. I might have watched a kitty cat video and forgot it five minutes later, mm-hmm. but because we can count it on the clicker, we decided it matters. Yeah. I think religion has to have the sense in time and space to be able to transcend what we can perceive as as uh, powerful, yeah, and and actually change change the room on that. Yeah, yeah, that's fascinating. Mm-hmm. And going back to the social justice conversation, because I do very much uh, it does resonate for me deeply that how central of of a tenant that is within Jewish thought, um, uh, and yet uh, my understanding of uh, the need to be in the forest, you know, and I think that if you extend just because it's commonly understood, Buber's idea of I, it, to I, thou, to this as well, that the notion of using religion as a mechanism for um, um, some ide- ideological vision upon the world yeah. is itself, uh, you know, taking uh, taking that similar move right. that um, is what we're trying to move away from. Um, you know, and I, I like it as yeah, two poles. Yes, yeah. yeah. So, right. like, my father's a mystic. Yeah. I was raised in the forest. Yeah, right. You know, and, and it didn't necessarily ever yeah. have to connect to the uh-huh. street. When I became a rabbi, I said, no, it has to connect to the street. Right. If it doesn't ultimately connect right. to what's right. going on outside, yeah. uh, yoga's down the street. It's yeah, much yeah, easier. Yeah, yeah, right. right. Right? And I like to say that in our, you know, at the kitchen in San Francisco. If we're just looking inward, it's yoga, and yoga is cheaper and easier, and let's just do that. Mm-hmm, okay? Mm-hmm. At the same time, if we can never look inward, yeah. and we never can locate ourselves within ourselves, with within the Kali Yisrael, within the world, we've really lost something. Yeah, yeah. So we can't make religion instrumental, even right. for the best aim. Right, right. So um, with Pesach coming up, yes, I wonder if you're thinking at all these days about leaving Egypt, and if so, what 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 um, what reflections you might have on that this year. You know, I actually, people at the kitchen know that I collect midrash about leaving Egypt Mm. and especially the moment at the sea. Mm. Um, But uh, recently I've been thinking a lot about the classic line, um, we were slaves in Egypt and God brought us out with a mighty hand and Mm -hmm. an outstretched Mm -hmm. arm with signs and with wonders. We read it in Haggadah, we say it in Kiddush, we say it in our daily prayers. Uh, we say it every Shabbat. It's it's this emblematic, really, really powerful line, maybe our most powerful story, right? And lately I've been having two problems with it. Um, my first problem is that um, it syncs up too beautifully mm-hmm. with the last hundred years of Jewish history. Mm-hmm. We were slaves in Egypt, that is, we had the Shoah, mm-hmm. and God brought us out with a mighty hand and an outstretched arm with signs and wonders. Now we have Israel. Right? And now we are free. Even if you believe that Israel comes out of the ashes of Shoah, which is a bitter pill, I I don't personally believe that. My problem with the story, given the transition of power... Do you mean that it comes out politically or theologically? um, I just have a hard time considering Israel as the reward for Shoah in any way. Got it. I want Israel to be able to stand on its Mm -hmm. own ground. And I probably follow David Hartman, you know, instead of having a, a Brit with the Shoah, I want, there to, I want Israel to be the place of living Torah. Yeah. Um, but, but with generational shift and with new generations yeah. coming into their own, mm-hmm. my problem with this story is that even if you buy into that narrative, it syncs up so beautifully that it means we're in the final chapter. Mm-hmm. We're, it's over. Mm-hmm. And what new person who might join this story is going to be part of something that's over? Nobody's going to want to be part of it. 
And so that's my first problem, mm -hmm. that we need to figure out a way to tell the story so mm -hmm. that we're actually in the crux of the story. Right. Because we certainly are. Yeah, essentially what we hear is this great trauma and glory of the 20th century that resonates so much for uh, an older generation. Um, our job is to just understand it and support it. Right. and reinforce those messages of what happened. But you're right. right. How, what does it mean to be an active creator of the future within that model? Yeah. There, the new generation requires yeah. authors. Right. My other problem with the story is that it talks about we were slaves. Mm -hmm. And because it marks us as slaves and God brought us out and mm -hmm. it never says we were yeah. doc now, and now we're doctors and now we're lawyers and now we are baristas and now we are mm -hmm. activists and now we you know now we we mm -hmm. work down the we work with children mm -hmm. because it never says who we are now i think there's a big and and certainly because of the last years and certainly because of very legitimate things we are still we still think of ourselves as slaves five minutes ago mm -hmm. we were just slaves so the minute some anti-Semitism happens, which in anti-Semitism is And the real, Haggadah reinforces it. Chayev Adam, yes. wrote that that's more. We should exactly. constantly see ourselves. This is us. Video. This is us. Yeah. The, and, and the minute that we, we only think of ourselves as slaves five minutes ago, and so we cannot consider that there might be other slaves in that narrative. We get, we get shot back to being slaves immediately, mm -hmm. and it's almost like a visceral. Mm -hmm. I'm a slave again. Mm -hmm. Trauma unhealed. I think so. And so what I, I want us to consider is a retelling of the line to say, there are slaves. And God will bring them out with a mighty hand and an outstretched strong, with signs and wonders. And when I think about that, I think, well, then who are we in the story? Again, who are we? And it's clear we're not the slaves. I mean, at least in the town where I live, you can go yeah. to the Tenderloin, you can yeah. see people who are really deeply right. enslaved. Yeah. And it's clear we're not God. We're not. We're not God. But I think maybe this version of the story and this telling, we could be the signs and wonders. Mm -hmm. We could be the mighty hands. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. There's a real role for us to play mm -hmm. that comes from Torah. Yeah. That links us to other people. This is the most popular story. It's been used by so many other peoples to great effect. Yeah. And this year at Pesach, I'm, I'm going to be thinking about what goes on beyond my table. Yeah. Very powerful. So, um, how can folks um, how can folks tap in um, locally to to experiencing your community? We are open doors. Yeah. The Kitchen yeah. SF dot org. Awesome. We have Shabbat almost every week. We bring great scholars. Yeah. You've been a scholar mm -hmm. at the Kitchen. It's time to bring you back. Mm -hmm. um, and um, you, nobody will ever ask you, "Are you a member? Mm -hmm. You know, why are you here?" Yeah. You, anyone can come. Yeah. We'd love to meet with people. And also we have um, three incredible rabbis now yeah. who are willing to meet with people, people who've never tried anything, never yeah. done anything. Yeah. And we are also hoping to get into media. Yeah. Look, look for that. Okay, awesome. I'm saying it amazing. officially. Amazing. I just said incredibly talented scholar and community builder. It's been amazing to watch uh, what you've been building. Thank you so Thank much. Thank you so much.